and order. As this is the first debate in which the Assembly will hear from uh, Mr Fergal McKinney, I would remind the House that it is the Convention that a maiden speech is made without interruption. So I call Mr Fergal McKinney. Mr McKinney. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, and I rise to support the amendment. Um, um, from Ballycastle to Balik, from Coleraine to Cross McGlen, our town centres are in trouble, in deep trouble. Main streets which managed to hang on and even to thrive through the bombing campaigns of the 70s and 80s are now falling victim to an even more deadly attack, where the damage through economic recession can be read in the prevalence of pound shops, charity shops and vacant shops. As a society, we have deep questions to ask ourselves about the sort of towns we want to have and are prepared to pay for. Pound shops are great, and so are out-of-town hypermarkets, but they come at a price. And all the flower pots and hanging baskets in the world cannot hide the reality that many of our town centres are in serious difficulty. And people are looking to this Assembly and the Executive to take a strategic perspective and do something about it. The decline of our town centres is not just a recent problem. The proportion of local family-owned businesses has been declining for decades, but the decline has been accelerated by the economic downturn of the last few years. In the new streetscapes, dominated by the chain shops, there is an inevitable loss of character, and with it comes a loss of footfall. And with hindsight, we can now see that ringing our town centres with anonymous windswept car parks may not have been such a good idea. So what do people want from us? Well, I suspect they want a bit more than fresh paint and hanging baskets. And while many welcome the schemes that improve the appearance of some of our vacant shops, we must acknowledge that this is only for the optics, and the real strategies that we should be employing will make as a top priority putting businesses back into those empty spaces, and that we will think differently and act differently in our attempts to do so. We have to measure the sense of loss in our town centres, not just in terms of business, but also in terms of community. And as Mr Copeland pointed out, there was a sense of local ownership when most of the businesses had been founded by families you knew and were owned and operated by your friends, neighbours and family acquaintances. People want that sense of community back. They don't want their town centres to be anonymous. That's the challenge for the Minister, but it's not one he can meet on his own. The greatest need we have, and the one thing this Assembly could deliver, is joined up government. By its very nature, a town centre relates in one way or another to all our public agencies. It's not just about the retail trade. The town centre is also a focus of tourism, a transport hub, and a social and recreational hub. All of the agencies and organisations which relate to these different aspects have their own plans. The challenge is to bring these plans together, and the key agency, the one with the best opportunity to maximise the local buy-in, is the Democratic Local Authority. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, we are in deep recession and our businesses are struggling. For some, their very survival is at stake. There are many trends in our globalised economy which are damaging to our town and city centres. So we must imagine a potentially different high street of the future, one which recognises the significant challenges that have undermined it in the past and ensures that we put vibrancy back at the heart of our community. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, what we also need to do is ensure that there is no more self-inflicted damage of the kind which Belfast has been suffering for the last year. The last thing, the last thing our business people need is a campaign of civil disobedience, and we don't need a minister for mayhem. Putting an end to that self-inflicted damage is very much in the hands of the members of this House. Given the perilous state of some of our high streets and town centres, we simply must recognise the severe damage this causes and ensure it doesn't happen again. What is also in our hands is agreeing that there's a problem and agreeing to do something about it. If there was a thermometer, a way of measuring the quality of a community, it's in the vibrancy or not of its city, town or village centre. All of us in this room know the poor state of many of our towns. The statistics show it too. One in four of our shops here are empty, twice the UK average. That single statistic says that we must do something urgently and different from what we have been doing up to this point. 
Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, we need to listen to the business community over its anxieties around business rates, planning, transport, car parking charges. Because that business community is telling us not just that the problem is bad, it is also telling us that it is going to get worse unless something is done and done urgently. It is predicting that many hundreds of high street I'm businesses will close in the future the if something is not done. And that, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, is a warning that we cannot ignore. We can respond to that warning most not with short term fixes, but with a real strategic, yeah. prosperous vision. Thank, Thank you. you.